Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sharson Zero, and today I'm joined by Azure Wolf, Blind Oracle, Fear No Equal, and Longfish. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. Whether you're a new player trying to gain experience and level up your game, a seasoned fighter who's looking to learn some new tricks and maintain your edge, or a dungeon master who wants to get the most challenge out of your monsters, join us as we slice and dice our way through Monsters and Mayhem and evaluate the tactics that decide who makes it onto the boss fight and who's going to be reaching for a fresh character sheet. In this series, the players are controlling the characters straight out of the starter set. I am Lawfish, I am playing the level 14 Dwarven Cleric. I am Fear No Equal, and I am playing the level 14 Champion Fighter. I'm Blind Oracle, and I'm playing the level 14 Thief Rogue. I'm Azure Wolf, and I'm playing the level 14 Wizard. At level 14, our daring adventurers are descending into the lair of an eye beast. They'll face six encounters all based on this theme before they get a long rest and level up to level 15. This is the 14th dungeon in the starter set series, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review what the players have at the start of the dungeon. I am Longfish. The new spell that I picked up for level 14 is Conjurer Celestial. More of HP for the enemy to chew through. Currently I'm holding the Staff of Python and the plus 2 shield. In tune with the Cloak of Protection, the Pearl of Power. I am a level 14 fighter, primarily packing a plus 2 Great Axe, but also a plus 1 Pike. In addition, I've got a Javelin of Lightning to give us some ranged options. Action Surge, Second Wind, and Indomitable, all available as activated features. And we've got a bunch of items that give us some ranged options. We've got a couple of Circlets of Blasting, a couple of Elemental Gems. we got a Gem of Brightness, Dust of Sneezing and Choking, Dust of Disappearance for Invisibility if we need it, a whole passel of Potions of Giant Strength of various types. We're currently attuned to the Cloak of Protection, the Winged Boots, and a Ring of Jumping. Blind Oracle, level 14 Rogue. Notable magic items include a plus two short bow and a Falukian Bandor, which lets me impersonate being a wizard. Other things, 76 sneak dice at this point, and I now have Blind Sense out to 10 feet. At the moment, the attuned items are Bracers of Archery, Boots of Speed, and the Falukian Bandor. Falschlukan? Falklukan? I think it's Falklukan. I think it's German. I'm Major Wolf. I'm playing the Wizard. New things on the block is going to be the Overchannel ability, which will allow me to basically take some damage to do max damage on a spell. It continues to go up as I use it. New spells to be interested in is Proofy Disintegrate, a little bit more long range here. Attuned Wand of the War Mage plus two, Cloak of Protection, and I'm the Pearl of Power. All the encounters use monsters straight out of the monster manual with no modifications or adjustments. Encounters based on challenge ratings from that book. I'll control the monsters and do my best to put as many adventures in the ground as possible. As we go, we'll talk about the choices we made, why they fit the characters that the players are using, and what mistakes we made along the way. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. The adventurers are going to delve into the lair of an eye beast, a classical and notorious monster that lives in the depths of the earth, chewing out caverns with its disintegration rays and populating with monsters to protect itself from adventurers doing exactly what they're going to do, coming down and slaughtering it. Cleric, are you pre-casting any spells? I am pre-casting a level 4 aid and a level 6 hero's feast. At level 4, 8 will give us 15 hit points to my three other companions. Hero's Feast, the hit points maximum increase by 2d10, which I rolled a 9. Creature is cured of all disease and poison, becomes immune to poison and being frightened, and makes all wisdom saving throws with advantage. So good. I am also going to cast a level 2 warding bond with the wizard. We have to stay within 60 feet. Plus one bonus to AC and saving throws, resistance to all damage, also each time it takes damage, I take the same amount of damage. Wizard, what are you pre-casting? Find familiar to get my owl, ritual casting water breathing on the party, ritual cast simulacrum, mage armor on me and the simulacrum, he's going to get the cloak of protection and the other wand that I had. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand, usual. I am at 110 HP. In my hand is the Wand of the War Mage plus two, and my Wand of Magic Missiles. Four first level, three second, three third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth. Arcane recovery is still available. Blind Oracle. I have 139 out of 139 hit points, holding a plus two short bow. A Focklucan Bandor has Fly, Invisibility, Levitate, Protection from Evil, and Good, Entangle, Fairy Fire, Shillelagh, and Speak with Animals available. Sneak dice all day. 
I have 172 of 172 hit points. I have Second Wind and Action Surge available, and I have two uses of Indomitable available. I have a Great Axe plus two in hand. I have a Circlet of Blasting and another one in the bag. Longfish. I am currently at 138 out of 138 hit points. I am holding the Staff of Python and Shield plus two. I have four level one, two level two, three level three, three level four, two level five, and one level seven spell slot remaining. Two charges of channel to Simulacrum. He is currently 43 HP, four level first slots, three level two, three level three, three level four, two level five, one level six, and his wand. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. In this encounter, at the entrance to the dungeon, the adventurers face down against a behir, Bayer, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think we're getting into a lot of monsters I don't know how to pronounce. And a couple of small eye beasts. The behir is like a lightning lizard with multiple legs. They can shoot a lightning breath. They can constrict. They can swallow people because they are a huge monstrosity. They got a passive perception of 16, so an active check will put them in threat range of our rogue. They are immune to lightning damage, as you would expect a lightning lizard to be. The small eye beasts are going to spectate for this fight and maybe get involved. They have a bite attack, which isn't very good, but they can shoot two eye rays a turn with 90 foot range. They can confuse you, paralyze you, cause you fear, or wound you, which is fun. They also have the ability to spell reflect back as a reaction. Which is rough. They have a passive perception of 16 as well. Sorry, Rogue, you're going to have to be making checks on this one. Am I? Are you at 25? Yeah. With a potential perception of 26, they could find you. Okay. If you roll below a 10, and you get a 10, and they roll a 20, and they tried to find you. <laughs> I mean, I probably won't try it, but they potentially will have to do it. You want to burn an action? That's that's a win for me. You maybe you choose not to make the rolls just to tempt me into doing it. Terrain and effects. The terrain's pretty straightforward. Not a lot of notes about this. Plenty of difficult terrain outside. Plenty of things to hide behind. Lots of trees. There is a choke point of sorts in the middle here, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity to try to get angles and, and duck back into cover, so that'll be fun. The inside, once you cross through the threshold here, the inside is 15 feet high. If there's no questions, we'll move on to tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? As the small person, don't get eaten. So I missed out on the simulacrum last time. I assume that that's a fairly valuable early resource and we should just go ahead and protect it long enough for it to blow out its spells? That seems to be the way to go with it because it's going to be the target. So yeah. It's got such a small hit point pool. So I think we want to try and drag them into coming out of the cave so that we can avoid pop and shoot lesser eye beasts. Use the simulacrum on the Bahir as much as possible to just lay down damage. Those guys are basically groundbound dragons, so we make them take this fight outside. All right, let's get into it then. Go ahead and roll initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 15 on the fighter. Anybody have between a 15 and a 10? 12, 5 on the rogue. Anybody have between a 10 and a 5? I got a 9 on the Bahir. 7 for the wizard, 5 for the owl. And Cleric, what do you got for me? 2 minus 1. Fighter here first kicks off. I want to block, so I'm going to move to the cave mouth and dodge. I want to draw some fire off the wizard. After that, we're going to go to the rogue. Is it feasible to hide in the difficult terrain behind the rock that is northeast of the fighter? Yep. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move there. I think I have to dash to do that. Five will get you there. Dash action. Perfect. And then hide action. A 23. My minimum is 25. The Bahir's turn. Lesser Eye Beast is going to move. We're going to try to go for the fighter. First one is a Paralyzing Ray. Fighter, give me a DC 13 Constitution save versus Paralysis. 25. That'll pass. Give me a DC 13 Constitution save versus Wounding Ray. 19. That'll turn 20 points of necrotic into 10 points of necrotic. And then he's going to move back there. And these are 90 foot range, which is fine. The same thing. Give me a DC 13 versus Paralysis. 25. Another 25. Sounds good. And then another DC 13 versus Wounding. 29. You're going to turn 14 into 7. The Bahir is going to move forward. It has a bunch of legs, so it moves awfully fast. With 50 feet of movement, it's going to get within 20 feet of you and hit you with a line of lightning. A DC 16 dexterity save. You're dodging, so you have your advantage on this. 15. 15? That sounds like a fail. 48 points of lightning damage. And then the Bahir is going to move back. After that, we're going to go to the wizard. Perfect. 
I'm going to cast a magic missile. I'm gonna blow two charges. Dice is going to be a two. Two plus one is three. Three plus five is eight. Eight times four is 32. He's gonna take 32 points of force damage. I would like to move northeast there as far as I can. And you have any command for your simulacrum? To burn it with disintegrate. And then the simulacrum goes, tell me about it. Going to cast Disintegrate. We're going to over channel with this bad boy. It is a DC 18 deck save. Doesn't look good. Fails with a nine. Cause it's over channeled, it does max. 10 D6 plus 40. 10 D6 could be 60 plus 40 is 100. 100 points of force damage. And he's gonna join me up here. I don't have to go look at our records. That is definitely the damage record. After the wizard, we go to the owl. Yeah, let's get behind the rogue because uh, don't think I can get in and get out safely. After the owl, we go to the cleric. Can you move me one space to the northwest of the fighter? And I am going to cast Sacred Flame on the lizard. It's a two on the die, plus three is a five. Three d6 for 12 points of damage, and I will enter. After that, we go to the top of the order, which is the fighter. Let's just go in to contact with the Behir, and we're gonna attack. Attack number one is a 26 to hit. Hits. 14 damage. Attack number two, that is a crit yep. for 20 damage. Lethal. And then retreat 10 feet as close to the rogue as I can. Bonus action, second win, D10 plus 14 healing, gonna grant me 17 HP. After the fighter, we go to the rogue. Let's do this. So I'd like to pop out from behind the rock. There's no way to see that front eye beast is there. Not unless... I gotta get to there? You would need to be down here. Let's click the boots of speed, move there, take the shot with advantage from breaking concealment, and then 27 to hit. 27 will connect. For 29 points of damage, use the rest of my move back behind the rock. After the rogue, we go to my turn and do what we should have been doing from the beginning. This guy's going to move. He's going to shoot an eye beam at the simulacrum. Simulacrum, give me a DC 13 constitution save versus wounding. Sure. That is a 16. Half 25 sends it to 12. And I got one square left, so I'm going to go skirmish. And then after I'm done skirmishing, I'm going to use my other eye beam ability. We're going to hit the fighter with paralysis. Fighter, give me a DC 13 con save versus paralysis. Well, I didn't roll a two, so it's good. 21. The other one is going to go, so he can actually get there. Does he have line of sight? He does not. So we're just going to hit the fighter with the paralysis, DC 13. 21. Pass, you are not paralyzed, and might as well hit you with the wounding as well. DC 13 versus 28. So you're going to take this nine and turn it to four points of necrotic. That's both of my guys. After my turn, we're going to go to the wizard's turn. Oh man, these guys have that one ability. So this is going to be interesting. Let's step out and upcharge another magic missile for two. Their reaction says if the eye beast makes a successful saving throw against a spell or the spell misses, then they can choose another creature they can see within 30 feet of it and redirect the attack. This is not a thing they can miss. It's not a thing they save against, so they can't use their ability. Yeah, I took a gamble. Two on the dice again. Two on the die plus one is three, plus five is eight. Eight times four is 32, and this guy drops. Three more squares of movement. You're gonna hang out, you're gonna stay, you're gonna move back north. After that, we go to the simulacrum. But he's gonna fire a magic missile, he's gonna move up. It's gonna be uh, do level three, just in case. Glad I did level three, because that's a one on the die. One plus one is two, two plus five is seven. Seven times five is 35, takes 35 points of damage. And let's move him back behind the wizard. After that, we go to the owl. Yeah, let's move in and give to fighter, I guess. After the owl, we go to the cleric. Move me two spaces to the south of the fighter, and I will drop another sacred flame on the eye beast. Dex, 18. He gets a nat 20, plus two is 22. He makes this successful save against the throw. He's going to choose another creature within 30 feet, which is going to be the owl. The spell targets the chosen creature instead of the spectator. The spell forces saving throw, the chosen creature makes a save of its own. So owl, give me a DC 18 dexterity save. That is a 12. 12 sounds like a fail. Cleric, give me some damage. 14 damage. 14 points of damage to the owl. I think that's lethal for the owl. Yeah, he's only got one. Cleric, anything else? I love you. End turn. After that, we go to the top of the order, fighter. Advance two spaces to the southeast. I'm going to use my gem of brightness to try and blind him. It's a DC 15 constitution check against blindness. 15 on the nose. And then I will drop to the southwest, and that'll be it for me. After that, we go to the rogue. Same play as before, although I think I have to take a hide bonus action first and then shoot. 
It's a 30. 30 will do it. Very sneaky. Much woe. And then we'll take the attack at advantage. 18 to hit. 18 will do it. For a total of 37 points of damage. He drops. Nice. And that's the encounter. Port hit points. 120 of 172. 139 of 139. The wizard has 110. Simulacrum. He is at 31. 138. The dungeon has been breached. The adventurers are on the way to clearing out the eye beasts that remain within. One encounter down, five more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarsen Zero, and I will see you next time.